For a good Thanksgiving dinner, many birds has lost his head. But they never miss them because after all they're dead. But you won't know what you're missing if you don't see Nord. <laughs> Transcribed from Hollywood, Norge, a division of Borg Warner, manufacturers of America's most modern automatic and ringer washers, gas and electric ranges, water heaters, and home freezers. Originators and world's largest manufacturers of self defrosting refrigerators, Norge presents the Red Skelton Show. With Red Skelton, David Rose, and his orchestra, Lorene Tuttle, Pat McGee, and Dick Ryan, and the Smith Twins will be me, Rod O'Connor. Now the star of our program, MGM's clown, Red Skelton. Thank you and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hiya, Rod. Hiya, Red. Say, I want to... Hold it a second. Rod, this being the Thanksgiving season, I think we should have a moment of silence for all those turkeys who gave up their lives so that, that people could make hogs out of ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now what were you going to say? Well, I was going to tell you that I stuffed my own turkey this year. Yeah. What? 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 <laughs> I said I was just going to say that I stuffed my own turkey this year. Yeah, from the looks, you think you stuffed it down your mouth. <laughs> say, the prices of turkey was really high this year. Yeah, if the price of turkey goes any higher, next year we will probably have used turkey dealers. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to trade in your old uh, 1951 model turkey to get a 52 model. <laughs> it costs so much to get a new one. <laughs> <laughs> I know what's coming and it stinks. <laughs> it will cost almost as much as the new ones, and that won't include the accessories such as uh, the stuffings and drumsticks. <laughs> I warned you. Well, uh, how much did your turkey cost this year? Oh, Matt? I couldn't afford to buy one this year. The FA FHA wouldn't finance it. <laughs> so I just dusted off the one we had last year. You ate a year old turkey? Sure, I like them better when they're cold. <laughs> After I finished eating it last year, we put it in what was left in the deep freeze, along with last year's Christmas tree. <laughs> Is there anything left on the turkey to eat? Not much, mostly goose pimples. <laughs> Hey, those freezers are... Hey, you know what I did? Oh, right. <laughs> I, we, uh, see, I, uh, this turkey, one year, we had uh -huh. a turkey. I have a way of, uh, of, uh, of getting rid of them, you know. You do? Yeah. What do you mean? I take an axe, see, and I look at the turkey right in the eye, see, and I let him watch me. And then he keeps his eye on me, and I run real fast, and he rings his own neck. <laughs> You were talking about deep freezers a minute ago, Red. Those freezers are really wonderful, aren't they? Yeah, well, I'll say. I got stuff in my freezers that's five years old. <laughs> I think some of these jokes came from <laughs> You mean you keep your jokes in your deep freezers? No, the writer's in there. Oh. <laughs> well, I happen to know you bought a turkey this year. How big a turkey is it? Well, it was supposed to weigh 30 pounds, but when I took the feathers off of him, he looked absolutely indecent. <laughs> and he only weighed 10 pounds. How come? Underneath those feathers, it, he was wearing padding. <laughs> those weren't his real drumsticks. <laughs> oh, come on now, Red. You ever see some of these guys around Hollywood with those suits with the paddings in them? They walk around, they take off the coat, they look like the unveiling of a broom. <laughs> Those really weren't his real shoulders? You're kidding. No, no, no. The turkey weighed about 30 pounds, but the time we ate him, he only weighed 10 pounds, you see. I bought him alive, and he became a pet. And we liked him so well that we couldn't stand to kill him. So we starved him to death. <laughs> In case anyone's still listening, here's the Smith twins to sing Count Your Blessings. Happily and merrily, 
it doesn't cost you a cent. So count your blessings. It's time well spent. One little blessing, I love you. Two little blessings, you love me. Three little blessings for today. And many, many more to come my way. So count your blessings and be content with what you got. Forget what you have not. Play a little melody. Happily and merrily. It doesn't cost you a cent. So count your blessings. It's time well spent. It's time well I'll bet you ladies could use some extra help from now on through New Year's. Well, here's how you can get it. Help that never forgets, never talks back, and never gets tired. Get the new Norge four-way automatic electric range that cooks by remote control. You just tell it what to do by setting the selector switch on automatic. And your Norge will turn itself on at the right time, cook a whole dinner to perfection, then turn itself off again. And it's not just the oven that works automatically. The deep well cooker, the high-low surface unit, and the appliance outlet work automatically, too. And this new Norge is so speedy. The new flat-top surface elements get the heat into the food faster. And there's a super-fast rocket element that gets red-hot in seconds. Then there's the big Norge blended heat oven. It not only bakes better, but it bakes cheaper. Actually bakes with the electricity off three-fourths of the time. Why not trade in your old range for a new remote-control electric model now so you can enjoy it during the holidays? You won't know what you're missing if you don't see Norge. From the Skelton Scrapbook of Satire, we present a story entitled, Things to be Thankful for. Chapter one is dedicated to all wives who should be thankful they don't have a husband like Willie Lumplum. Good morning, Willie. You were trying to start an argument... waking me up, boy. First, they, you dragged me off to a Thanksgiving party last night, and then the cops dragged me home. I got a drag around this town, boy. <laughs> I'll get lost so I can get some sleep. But it's time for you to go to work. You mean you woke me up just to tell me that? <laughs> oh, the oh, the low da- I will get you if it's the last thing I do. <laughs> If you don't hurry up, you'll be late for work. So I'm late for work. So what? There's not much of a future at that Tutti Fruity factory. <laughs> they can get along without me. I'm tired of being the head Tootie around there anyhow. <laughs> I thought by now I could have at least worked myself up to be an assistant Tootie. <laughs> You see what I do? I when the tutti fruity comes by, I separate it. See? I see that there's not more tutti than fruity, <laughs> and sometimes uh, uh, more uh, fruity than there is tutti. That's my job. <laughs> no, I can get can along without me very well. Remember, you've got three mouths to feed. Yeah. Well, you grow two more? <laughs> I was referring to myself and the other responsibility we acquired a year after we were married. Oh, yeah. Well, look, you tell your mother I'm tired of the support. <laughs> your mother in that Carl's bad tavern that she calls a mouth. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, my dear little bride... You can tell her to pack her racing form and get out. <laughs> Will you please get out of bed? I am sorry. I have so many covers over me, I have to use a bookmarker to find myself. 
I put too many covers on last night, and they've got me pinned down. I'm stuck to the spring. Well, no wonder. You're sleeping under the mattress. <laughs> well, I wanted to put my pants under the mattress so they'd have a nice crease in them, see? But I was just too tired to take them off. <laughs> Clean socks. Clean socks? Aren't we getting a little extravagant? <laughs> Billy, yeah. will you be home early tonight? I'll be home 20 minutes after. 20 minutes after what? After they throw me out of Joe's place. <laughs> that reminds me, I'm thirsty. Oh, I'll get you some water. I said thirsty, not dirty. <laughs> It won't hurt you. Oh, no. Did you ever see the inside of a water pipe? <laughs> and did you ever see the inside of a fermented keg? All right. I'd rather be moldy than rusty. <laughs> Why do you want me to come home early for it? Your mother wrestling on television again? <laughs> no. We're invited out to a Thanksgiving dinner. And by the way, Willie, the party is formal. Oh, well, good. I need a new dress for the a, party. A new dress? What's wrong with the last dress I bought you? Goodness me. It's out of style. Already? Why, well, you just got it from MacArthur's speech. The one that he made it and he graduated from West Point. <laughs> Willie, I spend less on an evening gown than you spend in a week at Joe's Well, place. I'm glad that you admit that you're all wasteful with money. Well, I guess we'll just have to cancel our day. I refuse to wear my old dress. It makes me look a fright. Well, as long as it's an improvement, who cares? <laughs> Willie, do you want me to make a good impression? Or maybe you don't. Maybe you'd rather I wear old rags. Or go in a gunny sack. You would look good in a gunny sack. <laughs> well, match that potato head you got. <laughs> Besides, my bank account is getting pretty low. Pretty oh, low. have your checks been bouncing? Bounce, I got news for you. The last month, when the bank returned my check, the mailman dribbled it to the door. <laughs> Must you yell? Mm. You want all the neighbors to hear you? I don't care if they do. I don't have to impress people. I don't have to impress people, especially neighbors. Always peeking over the fence, borrowing sugar, everything. And I don't have to impress people. You said that twice. I said what? You don't have to impress people. That's what I just said. <laughs> you and your big mouth. My mouth isn't big. Oh, no. And why was it, when we were in New York, you were standing by the Hudson River, and you yawned, and a guy says, where do I pay toll to go through the tunnel? an awful long time not to hear me. <laughs> I said I don't have to impress people. Look, who's talking about impressing people? Who? Who? You. I sound like an owl. <laughs> Who? I wasn't paying any attention. See, I never listen to anything I say. I talk to myself, and that time I get some pretty stupid answers. <laughs> I bore me. I bore me. And I noticed that last night at our party, you tried to impress your boss with one of your fancy mixtures. Oh, yeah. What's wrong with that? I suppose you know your boss is in the hospital. Well, it was an Air Corps special. What happened to him? Well, you fixed him one of your Willie Lump Lump specials. That's the old Air Corps drink. Well. You mean one of those yummy yogurts with vodka? <laughs> Yes. For milk to hide chasers? He drank just one, and then he opened the window on the second floor and said, 
Well, I think I'll fly around the block. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember that now. Oh, you do? Yeah. Then why didn't you stop him? I thought he could make it. <laughs> And now here's David Rose and his orchestra playing their arrangement of All the Things You Are. And now for our weekly homemaker hint from Jane Masters, co-director of the Nord's Home Economics Department. Hello there. If you have a refrigerator with a cross-top freezer or a home freezer, here's a smart way to get a head start on your holiday baking. Instead of baking just enough layers for one cake, bake six layers and freeze four of them. Then you'll have a couple of two-layer cakes all ready to thaw out and frost any time you need them. Of course, if you have a Nord's electric range with that wonderful blended heat oven, you can bake all six cake layers at once. Because in this big oven, there just aren't any hot or cold spots. You can use every inch of it. And the new remote control model has a lighted picture window so you don't even have to open the oven door to watch your baking. In fact, you don't even have to stay home to cook when you have a Nord's remote control range because it's four ways automatic. Get your nearby Nord's dealer to show you the new remote control electric range. You can depend on it. Because everything Nord's makes, Nord's makes right. Believe me, you won't know what you're missing if you don't see Nord's. Chapter 2 of Things to be Thankful for concerns a punchy fighter who should be thankful he's still alive. Cauliflower McPug. Uh, what do you mean I'm a washed up corn? I still got a lot on the ball. My father had a lot on the ball, but he had a big chain that held him back. <laughs> Yeah, I still got a lot of old fight left in me. Not much blood, but a lot of fight left. You know. 
I can wish that canary would stop chirping. He's getting on my nerves. Ricky, where were I? Hey, fella. Yeah. Hold it a second, will you? Who, who is it? Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? Keep talking. I'll find you. Where is it? Well, you just call a flamic plug. I suppose you're still hearing bells and boys? Are you kidding? Bells and boys only bummed you taking one punch too many here, bells and birds. I guarantee you, boy, and I'm really in good condition. <laughs> you better call a cop. A burglar alarm just went off. <laughs> yeah, that really scared my pigeons away. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry I bothered you. Yeah. The guy that was supposed to fight Killer Roderick tonight didn't show up, and oh, I was yes, trying to find a substitute, but you won't do. What do you mean I won't do? I can paint the dive the best as the rest of them can. <laughs> they call me the Esther Williams of the Main Street Gym. <laughs> the guy said to me last night, he said, I want you to lay down in the second round. I said, are you nuts? I never went that distance <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, you wouldn't last two seconds in the ring with Killer Roderick. Oh, no? No, uh, you don't even have any muscles. Oh, don't feel that arm, boy. Okay. Yeah, uh, wait now, I'll find it. <laughs> you must leave there, Dumpery. Oh, there it is. Feel that, boy. Look like a macaroni with veins, don't it? I don't feel any muscles. Well, be patient. It'll swim along in a minute. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I can't use you. What do you mean? I got a good fight record. I was the pantyweight champ of the campfire girls. <laughs> I said I can't use you. You get moited. Ah, uh, you might know. I... Will you stop that? <laughs> the thing guy tapped me on the back of the head, but when I turned around, he never did. <laughs> No, I'm sorry, McPug, but you'd get murdered. Now, look, you might not know it, but I fought in the garden. Madison Square Garden? No, vegetable garden. My wife and I were out there hoeing the other day. <laughs> look, I got to fight. I need some dough to buy a, a, a Thanksgiving ostrich. You mean turkey? No, this is a turkey. We got it now. <laughs> no, I want an ostrich. I'm nuts about drumsticks. You're nuts, period. Oh, you're going to give me a chance to make some dough? Okay. Uh, tell me, you got any boxing trunks? I I, I fight in a full dress too. That's in case anything happened, all you got to do is cross my arms and carry me out. <laughs> okay, come on out to the locker room. Okay, that's fine. That's good. All right, now hurry and get dressed. Your bout goes on next. My what does go on next? Your bout goes on next. Oh, it does. That's good. <laughs> my bout goes on next. Right. What's the bout? <laughs> Oh, now, let's see. I'll take my pants off. I always forget to unbuckle my belt. <laughs> Boy, what skinny legs. Yeah, dog follow me around with a bottle of ketchup on his hand. The other day, I was down to the beach. I was there uh, wetting out the sun, you see. And I'm so skinny that a dog buried me three times. <laughs> Then a guy was throwing your stick out in the water. That dog bought me back nine times. <laughs> they look like a couple of rubber bands, don't they? Huh? Well, stop snapping them, will you? <laughs> well, I got my boxing trunks on here. Ain't they a teeny weeny bit large for you? Oh, no, I always wear them off the shoulders. <laughs> All right, come on, this way to the ring. Okay. Uh, I, I'll show you some flats, boy. Watch me jump over the rope. Go ahead. Watch me crawl under the rope. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> in this corner, at 122 pounds, eight ounces, Calipar McCloud. Oh, they're with me. The crowd's with me. I can see and, and in this corner, at 210 pounds, Killer Roderick. This fight is scheduled for ten rounds. <laughs> <laughs> that lady queen for when he took off his robe and forget he swung. <laughs> this fight is scheduled for ten rounds, but we know, don't we, folks? All right, boy. I'm glad you like it. I mean, <laughs> now you know the rules. Yes. I want you to fight clean. And remember, cauliflower, I want you to put up a good showing. 
Oh, well, you can count on me. I expect to. <laughs> now then, shake hands, and when the bell rings, come out fighting. Why can't I come out fighting? I'm not mad at this guy. Bellify, you all right? Yeah, yeah, give me a chance to get my breath, will you? That's a long walk from the dinner of the ring, you know. <laughs> Boy, the next, the next time I'll be carried out and I won't have to walk, you see. I wish there was something I could give you that would keep you from being hurt. Well, the matter of fact, there is. You don't happen to have a ticket to Honolulu, do you? <laughs> Here, put these rubber teeth in your mouth. Oh, thank you. Cauliflower, you weren't supposed to swallow them. You're, they were to protect your real teeth. Well, my real teeth will be down there and wait them in a few seconds. <laughs> Ellen, keep calm. Yeah. And don't let his muscles fool you. Oh, they don't fool me. They're real. <laughs> I heard that damn scream. Oh, there goes the bell. Hey, come, come back here. The bell didn't ring yet. What was it, a fire alarm? <laughs> be calm, be calm. Well, go on, Cauliflower. Did you hear the bell? Of course I didn't hear any bell. What do you think? I'm pointing to you, Tim? <laughs> He's coming after you. Get yeah. in your best fighting position. Okay, I'll stretch out on the floor. <laughs> Oh, go on, killer. Let you hit me. Let you hit me. Come on, boy. Okay, puny. Try this on for size. Get up, cauliflower. Get up. No, I can see the fight much better from the third row here. I'll fix this guy up. That's right, cauliflower. Keep away from him. I am. Keep away from him. I'm trying to. That's why I'm crawling under the canvas here. Cauliflower, you're doing swell. I am, huh? After this fight, you'll go places. Yeah, to the board. <laughs> Take that. Mm. And that. Mm. And that. Those mm. punches. Mm. Huh? <laughs> Stop mm. them punches there. You don't see any of them going by me, do you? <laughs> hey, that was a tricky one. Did you see what I did there? He threw a terrific right, and I cleverly blocked it with my eyes. <laughs> You're doing good. You got him baffled. I got him baffled. You said it, boy. I sure fool him, don't I? <laughs> he thinks I'm going to duck, but I don't. <laughs> You're a real welterweight. Yeah, but I got more wealth than weight. <laughs> okay, dream boy, here's your ticket to the land of Nod. <laughs> Pleasant dreams. One, two, three. Telephone, get up. Get up. Get up, can't you see I'm on the phone? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and you're out. How do you expect the guy to sleep with all this racket going on? Oh, that was a great fight, Cauliflower. Not good, huh? You rest up and be back here at 10 o'clock. What for? What do you want? They want an encore? No, no. You've got to be back here for the fight. For the fight? Well, what oh, name in heaven would this? This was just a rehearsal for the television cameras. <laughs> this is Rod O'Connor saying, remember, in refrigerators, home freezers, gas and electric ranges, washers and water heaters, everything Norge makes, Norge makes right. Stop in at your Norge dealers and see the new Norge remote control electric range that bakes, broils, boils, or simmers automatically. Turns itself on, cooks dinner, and then turns itself off again while you're out. The range that gives you seven faster cooking surface heat speeds. The range that's so thrifty it bakes with the electricity off three-fourths of the time. Yes, you better see the new Norge four-way electric automatic range at your Norge dealers right away. And now until next week, this is Red Skelton saying thanks for listening and reminding you that you won't know what you're missing if you don't see Norge. Join us again next week for the Red Skelton Show. Red Skelton is heard in this program through the courtesy of Metro Golden Mayor Studios. This is a copyrighted feature transcribed from Hollywood. This is the CBS Radio Network.